Okay, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening everybody, depending on where you stay. Thank you very much, uh, Mazia and uh, Tiano Diana for this uh, kind invitation and uh, your kind introduction. Um, my name is uh, Oriol Arnau. Uh, nowadays I'm um, finishing a postdoctoral uh, fellow, a postdoctoral stay uh, at uh, the Institute of uh, Ingeniería of the National University of uh, Mexico. And um, today I will present um, uh, a significant part of my research job that was performed during uh, the majority of of uh, this job was performed during my PhD research at, uh, univer at the Polytechnic University of Catalonia in Barcelona, where, I, where uh, from, uh, I were from, and also a part uh, of a work performed here in the, inst in the Institute of Engineering from the UNAM. The title of my presentation is the Nonlinear Analysis of Tunnel Linings and Underground Structures, and I would try to focus a little bit on uh, the particularities of the Nonlinear analysis and uh, the uses in uh, this uh, in this underground environment. Well, um, uh, for the, um, well, if you want to know a little bit uh, more about me or uh, or you want more information, please uh, do not hesitate to uh, contact me at Oriol at OrielArnau.com or to visit my personal website OrielArnau.com. So for those who are Mm, not familiarized with nonlinear analysis, I would like to to point out to point out a few basic aspects. The principal characteristic of the nonlinear analysis is that uh, it allows a more uh, realistic consideration of the actual response presented at uh, both material and structural levels. Well, if it is adequately used, it could provide a better understanding of the structural response along the whole serviceability and ultimate limit stage. It means uh, getting a better comprehension uh, about the crack formation and propagation and how the stress redistributions are produced along the structure, uh, what is the joint response and the influence of the joints. But also, if you have a good uh, knowledge about your material properties, if you have a good material characterization, you could obtain satisfactory estimations of the main uh, of the main structural characteristic points. It could it could uh, be like uh, uh, obtaining uh, a pro um, quietly satisfactory cracking loads, ultimate strength, and even ultimate ductilities if if the main parameters are well reproduced. And what's this important? What this could be really important because. Uh, the quality and the precision of an engineering solution mainly depends on the uh, appropriate knowledge and comprehension of the problem. And in certain circumstances, getting uh, this, uh, these tools could help us to comprehend, to, uh, to have a better comprehension of the problem. For example, when, when, and, but it has some drawbacks, of course which are the main drawbacks are that it adds a significant complexity to the modeling and analysis procedure and also requires a significant experience and knowledge in the use of sophisticated uh, numerical tools. Well, so uh, in, in, uh, according to these characteristics and drawbacks, when is uh, this uh, nonlinear analysis necessary for tunnels and underground structures? Yeah, it depends on the situations, but I have listed some of uh, some of uh, situations that could be considered as, a, for example, in the design processes, if you are designing a segmental tunnel lining, and if you want to uh, account for a realistic response of the joints or uh, of the soil structure interaction, maybe you would require to use nonlinear interfaces, you want to use nonlinear springs that converting the analysis in a nonlinear analysis. Also, for the rest of um, of the rest of underground structures like conventional tunnel linings, stations, shafts, or connections, the nonlinear analysis would be really useful in order uh, to analyze this special design, uh, special design assessments that uh, sometimes require to include the nonlinear material model. For examples, uh, examples for uh, could be, for example, damage analysis 
for the loading pass thrusting force in order to prevent the cracking when the, the TBM pushes or makes the force in order to advance. In order to determine the actual response strength or ductility for outstanding structures out of the rule or as uh, outstanding connections. Also for considering, uh, for appropriately considering the, the, uh, the influence of the fiber reinforced concrete. Or in order to analyze the three dimension of response presented by a segmental tunnel line, lining in front of a rock folds, in front of localized loads of different aspects, etc. It would depend on the particular situations that it would be decided that nonlinear analysis should uh, must be appropriated for such for such parts. If you are interested in uh, the design processes for segmental tunnel linings or for the consideration of fiber reinforced concrete, I uh, would recommend you to review uh, previous uh, webinars performed by Dr. Baxi and also by Dr. Tiberten Professor Pleitzari. I think you can. Um, if you are a TNO uh, Diana uh, registered user in the website, I think you can access uh, all uh, previous uh, webinars. So it would be interesting if you are inter if you are interested in this in those topics, it would be uh, interesting to revise this these uh, fantastic jobs. Well, uh, the knowledge analysts obviously have an uh, massive interest in the in in, uh, in the analysis of damage at the structures in order to determine. Uh, the origin and the governing mechanism that, ori that originated these uh, damages. In order to perform damage predictions at not visible sites, it is really important for uh, underground structures. When you have a damage to uh, know what happens at not visible sites. It would be the extra to site uh, for tunnels or a shaft, for example, but also it could be caused because you have uh, flooded areas or non-accessible parts and you want to uh, to know uh, the you you require to know which is the actual situation of the whole structure in order to take a decision of what to do with uh, this structure it also allow you to uh, estimate the remaining strength of the utility of a damage that also helps it's also uh, mandatory to take an appropriate decision and also to uh, design uh, repair or retrofitting procedures uh, for uh, these damage at the structures. And of course, for research purposes, in order to provide a better comprehension of the complex structural response presented by these underground structures, in order to study and um, assessing a new analysis and design methodologies, define code prescriptions, etc. So, in order to provide an overview of the techniques and capabilities of the nonlinear analysis uh, applied to tunnel and to tunnels and underground structures. This uh, presentation has been divided in three different parts. The first one facing the modeling of an isolated ring, which would be based on an in situ loading test that uh, was performed inside the Line 9 uh, Barcelona tunnel. Uh, a second part facing the multi-ring modeling, based on the research uh, I have performed on my PhD thesis about the three-dimensional response of segmental tunnel linings. And finally, a brief, um, I would like to pass through two uh, brief examples in order to show the capabilities of, um, of the nonlinear models in, in analyzing real, uh, real cases of uh, damage. Well, let's start with the first part, that is the modeling and usability drink. As I, as I said, it is based on an in-situ test that was carried out in, the, in, a, in a real tunnel lining in Barcelona. And uh, firstly, I would like to point out a little bit, uh, to, to show a little bit uh, what was this test and, and few conclusions in order to jump to the modeling. Well, the objective of the of the in situ test was to uh, obtain experimental evidences of the structural response of a segmental tunnel line in its actual surrounding ground conditions. It means accounting the the ground the, the actual ground structure interaction, and also to study the feasibility of using a steel fibers as a unique structural reinforcement for the concrete. The experimental section was composed by um, 15 uh, rings uh, 
constructed by, uh, casted by using uh, 60 kilos uh, per meter cubic of steel fibers, and no main reinforcement bars were placed. Just, just a few small bars were placed in order to, to keep the in the place in the place the, the internal instruments, but it was not a, a structural reinforcement. Well, the three localized loads were applied at the tunnel crowd. Uh, with a maximum of 1,500 kN per force. It was, a, it was a hard rock compound, so it was possible to, to perform this configuration. These forces were applied through uh, hydraulic flat jacks embedded at the extra dose of the segments, which uh, press against, uh, which generates a pressure against the hardened ground and uh, the, the rock ground, producing a reaction that uh, uh, produces the, the, the deformation and the, the force on the segmental tunnel lining. The material properties uh, of the concrete were, uh, were adequately characterized through a compression test or piming test and also through the Barcelona test that it is a double punch test. And the response of the lining was uh, registered through a complete set of internal and external instruments in order to register joints movements, pressures, uh, uh, internal deformations, etc. Well, uh, just to highlight uh, s some conclusions that are in, some of them are important to create the model and some of them are interesting in order to contrast the results. The in-situ test uh, provided uh, some uh, interesting experimental evidences of the real structural response. For example, uh, we observed that the lining movements were mainly caused by concentrated rotations at the cracked sections and, and, uh, and at, at, uh, rotations at joints, sorry, and at the cracked sections under the jacks. We also observed that uh, a local arch mechanism was created under the concentrated loads for, the, for this hard ground conditions that was the, the main reaction mechanism. We also obtained that uh, the uh, suitable tangential ground stiffness for these uh, rock conditions was uh, one third of the the usual uh, radial uh, stiffness, and also that uh, this uh, for these hard rock conditions, no no significant contribution of the adjacent rings was produced when loading the ring. So. This conclusion allowed us to study the test by exclusively using an isolated uh, ring model. Of course, uh, the results also uh, also represents an excellent and a unique database for the calibration and validation of these uh, finite elements models. If you are interested in knowing more about the, the, the test and the results, you could find this uh, publication listed here. And that is published in an underground, underground space technology. You could find this. Um, you could find this uh, publication in the publication section of my uh, of my site. There is a link uh, to the to the journal. But or if you are interested, just just write me an email and um, I would uh, I would send it to you. Well, let's go with the modeling of the with the simulation of the test. The objective, uh, were, of course, was to reproduce the in situ test through through 2D and 3D models in order to uh, validate the adopted hypothesis and modeling techniques, and also to assess the precision achievable with uh, modern finite element models. The strategy uh, selected was to search and research in order to define modeling strategies that accurately and separately uh, allow uh, uh, an accurate reproduction of the main involved phenomena. Later on, they will be integrated in a 2D and 3D isolated ring uh, models. So, which were the main involved parameters in this case? It really were the post-cracking behavior of the steel fiber rate faucet concrete the ground structure interaction, the response of the joints, both in a physical uh, manner, whose um, 
representing the opening of the joints, but also at a material level uh, representing the, the packing elements sometimes place it between the segments. Well, um, the, the, an inverse uh, analysis procedure was applied in order to determine the material response of the steel fiber reinforced concrete. Departing from the experimental test data, a post-cracking low, in this case in a slope at constant was cracking low, was selected. And through the inverse analysis techniques, the, the parameters that provide a best fitting to the a structural uh, response of the test uh, were selected for this uh, post-cracking low. Anyway, it was uh, necessary to check in order to validate the suitability of this uh, selected post-cracking low and also of the using numerical models uh, to reproduce a steel fiber and false concrete. For such purpose, the simulation of the four-point beam test uh, was carried out uh, by means of both plane stress elements, as can be displayed in, in, the, in the picture, and also by shell elements models considering 11 integration points in the thickness. Um, these uh, two models were uh, aimed to reproduce the tests and uh, the uh, smeared crack approach included in the ANA-9 was used. In this case, I think, as uh, the multidirectional fixed crack model was used for such purpose. This can be observed, uh, both models, both shell, uh, shell model and plane stress model, provided a quite satisfactorily uh, agreement to the test, so it's validating the hypothesis. I would like to provide some tips for uh, nonlinear material modeling, and in particular for this case of uh, steel fiber and false concrete. When we select a post-cracking low, and it's a physical low, it is based on uh, the crack opening. But when you define uh, your response in a, in a, in a crack model, on a finite element model, it is based on the deformation of the element. Therefore, the characteristic points must be determined uh, in respect of the deformation that is related to the crack opening through a specific crack bandwidth. So, if you want uh, to define a material that represents a certain part of the structure, um, you need to use a regular mesh because depending on the, uh, depending on the element size, it, it modifies the specific crack bandwidth, so it's modifying this uh, multilinear diagram. Therefore, it is highly recommended to use a very, very regular mesh and use a, a one specific crack bandwidth for the influence zone. Also, uh, if you have doubts about the post-cracking shear response that you should or you want to assume, I uh, recommend to use the total strain rotating crack model because it, uh, it is uh, very accurate, it is uh, quite accurate, it provides very good results and usually to be a results a little bit more conservative because uh, if you uh, select a, a post, uh, because sometimes if you uh, overestimate this uh, post-cracking show response, you could get higher values. Also, for selecting uh, modeling considerations, iterative solution methods, convergence criteria, you would find a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, different considerations in uh, several publications using these methods. But any of these considerations, all of these considerations are sometimes based in a specific uh, aiming or a specific uh, point that is looking for in, in, this, uh, in, the, in the certain research or in the certain analysis. But if you are not a quite a experienced user, I, I hardly recommend you to follow the DIANA recommendations. You will find them in both in the DIANA manual, but also in a very, very useful publication that is uh, named Practical Recommendations for Nonlinear Structural Analysis in the ANA that was published by Kisio Palacio in 2013. I think you could find it in, uh, in the, I don't know if it's in the, the ANA environment website, but I think you, if you Google it, you will find it really easily. Uh, well, the, um, in this case, and in order to uh, focus the analysis of the response in the structure, the ground and the ground structure interaction was uh, modeled by using uh, radial uh, and tangential springs to model the ground. 
and uh, nonlinear interface elements were uh, placed were used in order to reproduce the the grout stiffness and also to allow the gapping intention. This is a very important fact because uh, the uh, lining cannot introduce tensile forces to the ground. And in this case where we have the jacks, the hydraulic jacks that literally separates the ground from the segment, it was necessary to consider this nonlinear interface that produced this uh, direct separation. This configuration uh, was applied uh, in both um, plane stress uh, models and also in shell elements model uh, using the necessary interfaces uh, for each case to to accurately reproduce them. Well, uh, in this particular section, uh, the longitudinal joints, uh, it means between the, the, the two segments of the string ring, presents a packer that is not quite usual uh, in the late tunnels. Uh, it was a bituminous sheet with a thickness of two millimeters that presented an unknown behavior. It was necessary to characterize this, the response of this material in front of uh, cyclic loads because the, 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 the in-situ test uh, co was composed by different, uh, different stages. When we tested, we observed that uh, this uh, packer material uh, shows a, a non-linear hyperelastic response with a significant remaining deformation, so it was quite complicated to be reproduced. But we achieved, we achieved a very satisfactory reproduction, reproduction uh, using a von Mises plasticity model and uh, being modified by the plasticity hardening diagram. You would find how to, uh, to perform this, how to use this plasticity model and the hardening diagrams in the Diana manual. It was uh, also necessary to uh, to to uh, reproduce the opening of the joint, uh, it was uh, as it is uh, some it is uh, commonly used in, uh, in references. Interface elements were placed, uh, which uh, present uh, no tensile stiffness. These both uh, these elements uh, from the interface elements allowing the opening and the packer elements were combined in the joint as placing the interface elements just at white side to allow the opening in order to provide the the, def, the final response of the joints that uh, is uh, depending of the, the normal force that is what it should be. Some tips for the nonlinear uh, for modeling with uh, using nonlinear interface it is uh, the, the interfaces um, uh, works analyzing the uh, relative displacement between nodes, but uh, they understand the sign of this relative displacement depending on the local axis. So um, you, as it is uh, of uh, paramount importance to to use nonlinear interfaces to check if the stress sign is correctly assumed respect of the of the relative displacements we are obtaining. If not, it, it the, the if not change the local access definition because you could have an approximation of the two nodes that you understand like as a compression but the thing could be on the opposite side. It, it has to be changed. I, I suggest a linear, an, an initial linear analysis and uh, check if the definition of the interfaces is uh, what you expected before uh, performing a nonlinear analysis. I would also recommend to avoid using ultra high stiffness values for rigid uh, connections or interfaces. It means you say, oh no, it's an interface, but it works. It is uh, stiff and under compression, but avoid uh, an extremely high value. Put uh, an, a stiff value, but not so in disaccordance of the rest of the structure of, or, the or about the materials you are connecting, because it can cause some numerical difficulties, especially when uh, you're using a frictional models. The same uh, consideration for the first topic uh, is, has to be taken into account if you are using nonlinear springs for modeling the ground, for example. You have to ensure that the response diagram you are uh, defining is uh, specified according to the uh, defined local axis. Well, these techniques uh, were uh, implemented in a 3D shell elements model and a 2D plane stress elements model to create the, the the model of the in-situ test. 
the initial situation of self weight and uh, water pressure was applied, and later the the sequential the sequential loading process followed during the test was applied. Um, the obtained results provide the same general response the obtained in uh, in the in the test, it means localized uh, cracks under the juxtaposition and uh, the format shape based on concentrated uh, rotations on the segment joints and on the cracked sections. Uh, we also could observe the, 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 the arch mechanism that provides a localized response focused in the load applied zone. Observe that the nonlinear interface is working properly through and uh, there is no reaction, there is no tensile reaction in the zone where the 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 ring that forms uh, to the to the center it is only reaction in the parts of the ring pushing the ground um, the, the obtained uh, displacements the measured displacements fits quite well the the predictions as, as could be observed here both for planar stress and shell elements model also the joint responses at the different points provide a very good result Okay, and uh, also the the crack patterns show a satisfactory agreement, uh, both in uh, both uh, uh, in the longitudinal cracking, that is the cracks caused by the ring bending forces, but also um, for uh, the circumferential and uh, radial cracking that uh, is caused by the stress redistribution of the localized loads. So. Um, it, um, it could be concluded that uh, the structural response of segmental tunnel linings can be accurately reproduced by uh, using finite element models. Uh, by both 2D planar stress and 3D shell elements models, by adopting the appropriate hypothesis and modeling techniques for many involved phenomena. You would find uh, the complete information about the, this, uh, the modeling of the in-situ test in this uh, publication that you could find in the in the, in the publication section of my website or just write me an email and I will send it to you. So let's let's go jump to the multi-ring uh, modeling. The multi-ring modeling was based on uh, this research about the 3D response of uh, segmental tunnel linings because um, for average conditions, for, for mean conditions, the real response of a segmental tunnel lining would be located some point in between the a rigid pipe response of an or an isolated ring response. It would depend on the a structural interaction produced between adjacent rings, and this implies that uh, it would depend on the configuration of the circumferential joints, circumferential joints between adjacent rings. Yeah, out of uh, very soft soil conditions in which sometimes a dowel and socket system is used in order to limit the relative deformation between edges and rings, the majority of the segmental tunnel linings present the plain configuration of the joints, this one. And this means that the longitudinal and radial force transmission is performed through the packer elements, place it in order to regularize the contact surface and to center the longitudinal force exerted by the TBM. Which would be the main mechanism, the main uh, 3D mechanism creating interaction? For example, if we think in a, in, a, in, a, in a ring subjected to a localized load, the ring deforms until the ground provides the necessary reaction in order to um, to uh, equilibrate this uh, this force, thus um, this would create relative displacements between adjacent rings if only this ring is, is loaded, and create a force transference through tangential mechanism to the adjacent rings. These tangential mechanisms, as it is a plane configuration, would uh, have a limit uh, since the uh, Packer concrete surface pr produce uh, slides. Thus, so defining a frictional response of uh, of this connection of this lateral interaction. Therefore, the structural capacity of the joint would depend on the existing longitudinal force, because it is conditioned by this frictional response. 
Well, um, tunnel boring machines constantly apply a significant longitudinal force in order to drill and to advance, thus leaving an initial amount of longitudinal compression of the lining that contributes to create or to enhance these frictional mechanisms. If you are interested in uh, knowing uh, what happens uh, with this force, please uh, visit this uh, reference here that is, um, that is for, uh, it, it was from a uh, work in collaboration of uh, uh, the Polytechnic University of Catalonia and the Delft University in which this, uh, the evolution of this longitudinal force is analyzed and it could be used to, in order to study the three-dimensional effects. Well, the three-dimensional response of the segmental tunnel linings were studied in front of both design loads in order to analyze the so-called coupling effect, but uh, also in front of localized loads in order to analyze the adjacent rings interaction. In this presentation, I would focus on uh, this topic because it's a little bit shorter and uh, we have uh, don't have of all uh, we have uh, time limitations, of course. But uh, let me uh, provide a little bit introduce about this. The, the model uh, of analysis would be exactly the same. So the, the the modeling techniques using here and here are exactly the same, but the focus are uh, a little bit different. Well, uh, because localized loads have an exceptional origin. For example, we could find a kind of localized loads when we have faults in rocks that create a discontinuity that can push the tunnel and deform it uh, differently at one side than at the other of a ring or of a of a part of, of a, or a, of a section of rings. About uh, ground swelling phenomena, we have uh, chimney-like failures, etc. These uh, conditions would create different loading of adjacent rings and produce different deformations, of course. And if we have different deformations, we have this separation that activate the interaction mechanisms. In fact, all situations that produce different deformations, regardless of the, the natural of the load, all the situations that provide different deformations, for example, tunnel openings that produce connections to the shaft or between tunnels or different or uh, parts that with what present uh, differences in, uh, in the stiffness would, would uh, present different deformations. And this would directly activate the interaction mechanisms. The, an analysis was performed based on a localized load. It was an, idea, an ideal load. It was not a real, it was a, a, research, uh, a research job in order to understand what happened. Uh, a complete set of analysis was performed uh, in different uh, ground situations, different longitudinal force situations, and etc., in order to analyze what happens with this uh, interaction. And we obtained significant conclusions about the influence of the ground to stiffness on the degree of interaction achievable between adjacent rings. The softer the ground is, the higher the interaction is, as could be observed here. It's for hard ground conditions. It's almost, almost, um, almost isolated response, but for soft ground, it is a high level distribution. And also the influence of the longitudinal uh, force that defines the load, the amount of load for which this maximum interaction degree is conserved uh, before the slipping of the packers. The, the slipping of the packers that uh, contributes to the end of this interaction is also analyzed in this publication. And uh, maybe if it would be of interest, we could another day talk about these, uh, these things. Anyway, um, there is a publication of it from the last year in Tunnel and Underground Space Technology that you could also find in my website or just write me and, and uh, I will send it to you. Well, so let's focus yet on the design loads and uh, the generation of the model, uh, of the three-dimensional model for segmental tunnel linings. Well, uh, under design loads, uh, nearly hydrostatic uh, pressure is applied that smoothly vary along the tunnel course. It, it responds to the, to the, to the ground uh, and um, the mo certain homogeneity of the, of the ground. So if the same load scheme is applied to adjacent rings, the same deformations would be expected. But uh, the majority of the segmental tunnel linings present unstaggered configurations of the joints. 
in order to minimize the ceiling problems. It means to avoid T, uh, the double T joints and to avoid the decompression of a whole segment when constructing, when removing the, the jacks. Well, as we said, um, in the segmental tunnel linings, the deformations are mainly based it, are mainly caused through concentrated rotations at the joints. This, uh, uh, combined with the stagger rate configuration, reduce that certain relative radial displacements can occur at the joint's position, thus activating these interaction mechanisms. The uh, objective of this work was to where to uh, describe the resistant mechanism and to determine the main involved parameters, also to generate a 3D model that are accurately reproduce all joint responses, and to determine the structural response of the lining and the conditions in which this coupling effects could become uh, relevant. And uh, finally, analyze the structural repercussions of neglecting these coupling effects that are the majority of cases they are not considered in the design process. So, which would be another time, the same procedure we applied, which would be the main involved parameters in this thing? It would be those that influence lining deformation, of course. Uh, we have the ground stiffness as we applied, as we, as, as we uh, previously exposed. Uh, it's a softer ground would require more displacement to produce the, the reaction. So, ground stiffness uh, would condition the deformation of the lining, also the lower tomb balance, and also the longitudinal force because it conditions the frictional mechanisms. A base situation was defined in order to study. It's, it's, a, it's not real, it's a, it's a base situation. And the parametric study uh, covering uh, different uh, values of uh, ground modulus of elasticity of lateral earth pressure that provides different ovalization loads and also of different longitudinal force were analyzed, defining a total amount of 180 cases. Well, um, a 3D shell elements model was created on the base of a real line nine section of 11 rings. It respects the, the, the actual position of the K dowel, of the materials, dimensions, etc. And the results of this, uh, of this uh, 3D section will be compared with the isolated central ring as it would be performed, for example, during the design process using only one isolated central. This would be uh, used it as a base of comparison to analyze the, the 3D uh, effects. Well, um, in this uh, model, uh, the, in order to analyze only the, the 3D uh, influences, the material properties were initially considered as linear elastic for the for the concrete means, but uh, nonlinear properties were were assigned to the uh, joints. In this case, uh, longitudinal uh, joints were applied to longitudinal elements within adjacent rings, and also interface elements were applied only at the exact position of the packers. That is the the packer configuration of this lining. There's the exact position of the packers where interface elements with the frictional response now would be. The frictional response of this packer concrete element uh, was obtained from the studies performed by uh, Dr. Cavallaro and Dr. Aguado uh, over the line 9 packer for different compression uh, tests. And this uh, allowed us to obtain the, the friction, a friction, an average friction coefficient for this, uh, for this uh, interface for this packer concrete interface that was reproduced in the model by using the interface elements and applying a more Coulomb frictional model plus a gap criterion to allow the opening of the joint. The longitudinal joints, it means between two uh, uh, segments of the same ring, were uh, reproduced according to a, the most usual concrete to concrete contact. Uh, behaving uh, stiff under compression, but allowing the uh, gap appearance under tension. The ground structure interaction was modeled another time, was simplified by using springs, and nonlinear radial springs in order to avoid this, uh, uh, this possibility of uh, the lining producing tensile efforts to the ground, and uh, also the tangential and longitudinal springs. <clears throat> As a general result, the general results, what we observed was that coupling effects 
produce a significant increase of the, or could produce a significant increase of the lining stiffness. Thus, reducing the lining deformations, but increasing the bending forces produced here, it could be the difference of the same case between the coplar ring, this is uh, this, uh, this uh, dark blue, yeah, and on coplar rings we will obtain this uh, softer, uh, this softer um, bending forces. If we compare um, the isolated ring results, if we compare the, the bending moment produced at the ground of the isolated ring results with the 3D model, the isolated ring results are listed here as a longitudinal force zero. It is no friction. We could observe like how um, a small longitudinal force was necessary in order to generate these coupling effects. We could also observe how this force magnitude does not significantly influence the structural response. Yeah, it is the same depend independently once the uh, coupling FX has been created, the force does not influence the maximum bending moment, except or out of a combination of really soft ground and high unbalanced loads. <clears throat> well, um, for designing purposes, uh, if we analyze the increase of the crown bending moment with respect to the isolated ring results that could be used in a design purposes, we observed how the influence of these uh, coupling effects increase with the reduction or significantly increase with the reduction of the ground stiffness, but also with the increasing this ovalization load. Look, the, observe that uh, increments over 100% 60%, uh, uh, 30% are obtained in some cases, are obtained in respect to the isolated rig results. So, if the isolated rig model is employed on this eye, significant increases of the expected internal bending forces could be created by these coupling effects, as could be observed here, for example, for these medium cases, 60% and 115% of increase of the expected elastic internal bending forces. These, these uh, bending forces could exceed the strength of the structural materials. So it is necessary to analyze the influence of neglecting these coupling effects if the isolating rig model uh, has been used for design purposes. Therefore, a nonlinear material model was applied uh, using the smeared crack approach uh, included in the Yana 9. The compression was assumed as elastoplastic and a brittle tension was considered. Elastoplastic response was also assumed for the steel. And uh, the idea was to, um, was to evaluate the significance of uh, do not considering these coupling effects. So the results of, this, uh, of these two cases, the, the isolating green results as we could perform in a design process, uh, were used in order to determine the necessary reinforcements according to the Euro Code 2 regulations. Yeah, so uh, according to the isolated ring design, the necessary reinforcement would be those. This um, analysis or this uh, this uh, reinforcement were applied to the to the 11 ring 3D model with a nonlinear material and the results uh, would be compared to the linear material 3D model with an advanced isolating ring model, uh, that is our reference in this case, a rigid ring and a movable ring that it is a simplification of the thickness of the lining uh, sometimes, user, uh, sometimes used in the in design process. What we observed was that uh, Cracking easily uh, is easily produced in the lining uh, due to these uh, coupling effects, uh, thus uh, reducing the stiffness of the lining and providing similar results to the Muir boot approach in the cracked zones. But on the other, on the but on the parts that cracking is not affecting, this Muir boot estimation provides an underestimation of the maximum internal forces. <laughs> Um, but, uh, okay, we have used an isolated ring model and uh, we have not taken into account the coupling effect. What happens if we take this model 
if we take uh, the, the designer drink, we apply the 3D model with the necessary reinforcement, and we take the reinforcement tensile stresses and the maximum compressive stresses, and we determine the crack width produced according to Eurocode 2 regulations. What we observe it is that despite this huge differences of 150%, 60% of increase in elastic forces. The maximum obtained crack width were accomplishing the uh, Eurocode service limit stage regulation, showing the excellent redistribution capacity of segmental tunnel linings once cracking appear. It means like uh, elastic analysis increase, increase, increase the, the value obtained at a certain point, but once it cracks, the lining redistributes and it is not such a, um, such a problematic as uh, it could uh, look, initially look. So the consequence of neglecting these coupling effects uh, should not be dangerous. This is an interesting, con an interesting uh, conclusion of this part. So um, as a highlights for this uh, 3D modeling, I just mentioned that uh, the staggered configuration of the joints produce a coupling effect, a three-dimensional effect that uh, should, take, uh, should be taken into account in a certain conditions, producing an increase of the lining stiffness and of the internal bending forces. And uh, they could present a significant influence for soft ground conditions or for high uh, unbalanced loads. Uh, the no consideration on design process of this 3D or coupling effects can cause concrete cracking, but should not be dangerous uh, according to this excellent redistribution capacity of the segmental tunnel linings. Well, and uh, as a last, I would uh, like to um, firstly pass through two uh, examples of uh, real um, damage analysis using uh, the nonlinear analysis features. Well, um, as we said, um, this, uh, the nonlinear analysis could help us to uh, understand and to evaluate certain damage situation. And this is really, really important in order to take decisions about damage the structures and uh, about uh, the repair procedures to select. It is a an, uh, it is a master skill. It is a master tool in order to take the appropriate decisions about these damage to the structures. For example, problem A. Uh, uh, it was a segmental precast concrete tunnel lining in a very soft soil conditions with a low uh, overburden under two uh, diameters. That but uh, it was ended without significant construction problems. So. Uh, up to here, it, every, everything was okay, but at certain time, a significant surface load was applied, and uh, this load produces the ovalization, the deformation of the tunnel. The main problem was that uh, despite this load uh, remains equal, and uh, it was not further modified, the, the deformation and the deflection of the tunnel landing continues, continues under the time, and was not stopped. So the analysis for this problem were to determine the mechanism causing this continuous movement, to estimate the actual stress state of the lining, and the significance of the possible damages at not visible sites, is what we expected, is which what we talked about. It's the damage at the extrados to analyze how the lining, which is the, the, the current situation of the lining, and also to characterize the expected response on the structural strength of the tunnel lining for continually increasing displacements, it means watching what could happen in the in the in the future. So uh, the initial geotechnical and structural studies indicated that this that uh, this was caused for a consolidation phenomenon that produced a progressive uh, diminution of the lateral uh, the lateral pressure uh, assigned to the vertical loading. So uh, we reproduce this by progressively uh, reducing the value of the lateral of pressure coefficient applied to the uh, new load. Yeah. We uh, use a plane stress model uh, cons uh, adequately considering the joint response, the ground structure interaction using the springs, the 
placement of uh, the um, reinforcements inside the, the segments. And what we obtained was that for uh, the initial expected conditions, cracking would appear more on the internal side of the tunnel and less at the, uh, at the extra dose of the haunches. But as this uh, lateral expressor reduces, higher amount of cracked would be uh, presented at not visible site. So th at the extra dose, to uh, leading the most damaged part at not visible site. The vertical and horizontal movements allow it to determine which would be the most representative situation of the tunnel that is covered more or less over these values of this case of zero values for the overload. But in this situation, the extra to side, this the non-visible, should present more significant damages than the internal one that what we are observing. So this leading, this uh, uh, photograph of this uh, uh, photograph of the state of the lining conduct us to take uh, important decisions about what to do uh, about this structure if it is uh, uh, if it is necessary to act if it's not what to do uh, etc etc also uh, just point out that the crack width that we determine it from the k uh, reinforcement stress from this k reinforcement stress and the compressive stress according to the euro perfectly agreed with the inner tunnel measurements of crack width that we made inside of the tunnel, just, just proving the the, uh, the the significant capabilities that uh, this nonlinear analysis could uh, provide us. Similar problem, but uh, I think in this case the images are clear. It was a, a damage in a tunnel shaft connection in which the tunnel uh, penetrates a little bit inside uh, inside the shaft. The primary origin of the damage was supposed to be differential settlements. The connection, uh, the damaged connection was this one. It is a complex uh, covering for uh, four big quarter shafts connected by three tunnels. The damaged connection is this. Uh, uh, differential uh, settlements uh, about 11, 16, 3 centimeters were measured between the shaft. They are really, really significant differential settlements, but they have an uncertain origin because this is placed in a region that have a regional subsidence, but also there were some contention failures during the construction of these tunnels that uh, modify the ground uh, structure in this uh, in these zones. In order to um, minimize these uh, settlements, mortar walls were constructed just around the shafts at a certain distance. This is the the, the red things are the the mortar walls. They were placed up to the first ground uh, layer. It was 36 meter deep. Well, the objectives for this analysis were to determine the damage uh, mechanism and also to clarify if it could be exclusively caused by vertical displacements. This is interesting because if, uh, if there is also another kind of displacement that they should be used, or they, they must be used for designing the future connections or the repairings or etc. It's, uh, it, it's very important to define what is causing this, this damage. Also to determine the non-visible zones that should also present significant damages because as we observed it is a floated zone and we could also observe the upper part of the connection. And also to uh, define the necessary requirements for a possible future design of flexible connection. It is connected to this, to this point of here of clarifying the origin of the damage. Well this is a render of the model. It was cons uh, a half of the shaft uh, was considered and the complete tunnel was considered. Uh, mortar uh, walls uh, were only considered on the interaction zones and depending on the moment. And the tunnel was composed by an uh, initial steel pipe that it's, uh, it's uh, uh, later a, a, a layer of reinforced concrete was applied at the inner side of this steel pipe. All steel concrete, the steel mortar interfaces were collaterally reproduced in the model. Nonlinear concrete response is assigned to the, to the connection zone, all this connection zone, and also to the pipe. And all the reinforcement of this connection were accurately considered and reproduced. Vertical displacement in order to reproduce the differential settlement were imposed at the tunnel end and at the middle mortar wall. 
total strain uh, crack model uh, was uh, used uh, for the concrete, while vernissage plasticity was used to uh, reproduce the uh, response of the uh, reinforce of the reinforcements. The reinforcement. What we observed was that the first point in presenting cracking should be the lowest part of the connection. It means the the the, the tunnel shaft uh, connection, but in the lower part, not in the upper, that it is subjected to uh, tensile forces, as could be observed here. What we could also perform was uh, to um, estimate which will be the stress state of the reinforcement along of the of this uh, of this lower part along different uh, stages of the different values of the differential settlement and also have an estimation of the possible uh, situation of the connection at not visible sites. So from the analysis we observed that the most damaged part from uh, this analysis would be the bottom part of the tunnel shaft connection that it's not visible uh, nowadays. Also the uh, interior zones of the tunnel that are not accessible would present uh, and in the would present a significant cracking, and also cracking would be presented in the internal side of the shop in the upper part, would, where uh, the damage is observed. But uh, the damages, the amount of damage here, and the reinforcement stress is present here. Take a look that here that the reinforcement stresses clearly show that this part has been cracked, but. These stresses and these damages are not enough to be in the correspondent to the damage observation. But it led us to, to uh, conclude that besides differential settlement, that would also be significant longitudinal displacements affecting this structure. So the future connection, the repairing procedure, should take into account that significant longitudinal displacements are being imposed uh, by the ground movements up uh, to this connection. So it's maybe, maybe uh, changing the kind of uh, repairing that uh, is uh, going to be faced. So um, that's uh, my final conclusions. Um, I would like to point out that uh, the nonlinear analysis, when it is appropriately applied, emerges as a really powerful tool in order to achieve a better comprehension of the complex structural responses presented by tunnel linings and underground structures that also allow to determine the origin and mechanism causing the structural damage that it is really important for future designs and also to predict the existence and the approximate magnitude of the damages and not visible sites that is of paramount importance in order to take decisions about um, about uh, the, the underground structure because it, it uh, provides a more realistic image of the uh, real uh, of the actual state of the lining and uh, it also uh, if you have a good um, if you have good modeling skills if you have detailed models and if you have um, a appropriate material uh, characteristic uh, characterization you could satisfactorily estimate the strength and the ductility of complex structural systems uh, constructed with complex uh, response materials as it is the reinforced concrete or fiber uh, reinforced concrete. So uh, this is the end of my uh, presentation. I would like to thank you all for your for your kind attention and also uh, thank uh, TNO, Diana, and Mazia for this opportunity of explaining to you of uh, my uh, my previous job. I uh, hope uh, it saw uh, it. Um, I ex uh, I hope it uh, was um, interesting for you my presentation. Please, um, if uh, you are interested in uh, knowing anything else more, or in my analysis services. Please do not hesitate to contact me through Oriol at orielarnow.com or visit my website at orielarnow.com. And if you have uh, any question and anything you want to know, anything, any doubt I uh, left you without covering, just uh, please uh, 
ask me what you want and I will try to to answer your questions. Thank you very much uh, all of you for your attention. It really, it's been a pleasure for me. Thank you.